it is my great honor to thank you so much for the great singing. This, I think, this congregation becomes very sweet when we are all together. When we have services together as a family, when we do sports together, when we meet all of us and we're excited to have our young people with us here, our children that did very well, and all of us. And so this makes it a family church. Amen. So therefore, I want to thank our children for doing a great job with the band and Hadassah who did a song. I want to thank our orchestra. Hey. Yes, great work. I want to thank our praise team that did a nice song here, two songs actually. And I want to thank God for our Goab, Ukutula. You know, South African, you are making us feel so African. And we want to finally thank our sweet choir. Uh, you, you people are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. When I was young, I used to go to P.C. St. Andrews just to hear the choir. So when they sing, I feel so good. And it's a great joy to see what they are doing, sitting here many hours to, to actually practice and pray for these days. So thank you, our choir director, and your whole leadership for the great work, even preparing the story of salvation. If you listen uh, keenly, we started to tell me the story of Jesus, and we have ended with I am coming, Lord. So by now, people should be saved. <laughs> so anyone who wants to get saved so far? <laughs> because if you start to tell me the story, ending with now I come, I am coming, Lord. It seems like a nice journey. Thank you for the reading of the word coming to us so clearly. And let me tell you that this is our desire, that we'll have more hymns in the first service. We want to make our first service a conservative service for the older people and those who love hymns. And we want to make our second service a vibrant choir for the younger people. I know many of us are a bit uncomfortable in second service. That means you should come to the first one. Amen. So second service is led for the younger people as a way of outreach because we are looking at the town here where young people are running to other churches that have vibe. So we want to have that vibe in the second service. You say amen. amen. And then have the conservancy <laughs> and the, that conservative Presbyterian spirit in the first service. So that once you leave church school, you go to Guav if you are in the university and colleges. From there, you come to the second service, those who are above 25 years. And then we become older, then you come to the first service. Amen. amen. So it's a journey. Is a journey, one has a few way. And this is what the session has made a decision. We even moved away our districts from the second service to make sure that our young people come and feel they are excited just like any other church here in town, but with the right doctrine. One has a few way. And that's why we are doing the School of Doctrines as a way of encouraging our people to go deep into what we call content. Although we are setting brands of the Teens Church, Youth Church, First service, second service, church, ch children's choir, uh, children's uh, service, we have made sure that our content remains intact. The reformed theology. Amen? And that's what we protect on this pulpit. Make sure that what is preached here is uh, ordinarily what we'd call a reformed tradition. Over and above that, this has been an exciting week. We have been here the whole week. How many have been here the whole week? Amen? No one. Ah, good. Please come, the two of you. They are here on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and today on Sunday. Please come. Those who have been here the whole week. We were here on Monday. Holy week. We talked about... Talked about what? Simon? Peter. On Tuesday? Hey, on Tuesday? Oh, my God. We talked about who? Who can remember? Uh, uh, Simon of Cyrene, who helped him. On Wednesday? On Wednesday? The good thief. Amen? <laughs> who was forgiven. On Thursday? The women. I was here. I taught you the women who followed, who grieved Jesus. Then on, on Friday, Joseph of? Then uh, comes when? Saturday. Who, who was here? Young people were here yesterday. What is it about? Yeah? The soldier. Amen. The soldier who pierced him. And today 
we are ending with Mary Magdalene. So these two ladies here are faithful disciples of this church. Hallelujah. Please come. We also know there are those who are online. We can't be very sure that you followed <laughs> or you saw it later. <laughs> but we also want to tell you thank you for following. Uh, even me, I missed three times. I missed on, uh, on Monday because I do a class at the university, Poya University. So I had a class in the evening. On Tuesday, I went to support uh, Reverend Kebiru in his parish. And yesterday, I missed because I had gone to make sure that I have married this lady completely. So I was uh, paying all dowry and finishing it. So I am a dead free man. Amen? <laughs> and a few witnesses were there. Now she is fully mine. No one can tune me from their family. <laughs> Just to make sure that men who are here can work around that. It, it, it takes long. It has taken 25 years for me to do that. So don't be in a hurry. Amen? Unakana embaka, unasikia sasa huyo ni mzuri. Ndiyo unaenda kupaniza yo, yote. So I encourage men who are here, but when you do it, don't do it like me. Don't cut the kiande. Just give people to eat meat. Because the meat we give in Gurario is not for igongona. It is meat for meat. Getoero. Amen? And that's what I did, giving every, every goat to make sure that people enjoy that now she is mine. Amen? And now to the word of God. Let us pray. Dear God, our loving Father, we thank you so much for the journey you brought us. The whole week, a great holy week. And Lord, we have walked with you through this journey of the salvation history. A week that we recognize who you are in our lives by sending your son. And so today, Lord, as we come in this week, in celebrating in song and dance and worship, we ask that God you speak to us. That your word will have a place in our lives. This is our prayer of faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the journey has been character surrounding the cross. Because we are looking at the, the daring faith in the areas of the characters in the book of Hebrews 11 for those who are new and those who have joined us today and those who are following us all over the world. I receive the messages from all over, Geneva, USA, everywhere saying they follow our services. So we are indeed a world parish. So many amen. amen. We are a world class parish and we thank God for what he is doing in the lives of people as they follow us. So anything you do here on this uh, pulpit, be very careful. The world is watching. Now, this journey that we started on Monday and we are celebrating today, we are talking about a lady who we picked from the other ladies and we are talking about faith that follows God or faith that follows the Lord and our character today is Mary Magdalene. And the text that was read to us this day, the one that uh, Nimrod read, the John chapter 20, is a text that we want to look at. Where Mary Magdalene was the first to go to the tomb. And when she realized that there was no, the body of Jesus was not there, she ran to tell the men. And she told two men, one called John and one called Peter, and they ran very fast to the tomb. And when they came, the Bible says where we read, John was the fastest. So many men. But he never got in. But Peter, right inside, and went and found Jesus was not there. And so, and generally men give up easily. Hello? They gave up and left. We don't know what happened. But this woman stayed on. Tell your neighbor she stayed on. She was left there at the tomb, and where, when she was there, the angels came to her. Hallelujah. So indeed, the other two gentlemen were not revealed to by Jesus Christ. Jesus came to this woman called Mary Magdalene. And you know, the angel comes and asks her, why are you crying, woman? And then she says, they have taken away the body of my Lord. I don't know where they have put, put, put him. And then the woman, again, uh, after, after she finished, Jesus again appeared. And you saw it on our on our video here. And Jesus appeared again and, and asked the woman called Mary Magdalene, who are you looking for? And Bible says, thinking that he was a stranger, a gardener, sorry, 
uh, Mary said, Sir, kama umembeba, eh, wewe mwanaume, nionyeshe mahali yuko. <laughs> Mwana asiwe sana. And then at that time, Jesus saw the passion that this woman had, Mary Magdalene, and he decided to reveal himself to her. How did he do it? Mary, you know there are voices that are suggestive. <laughs> Mary, and all of a sudden, she realized this is the Lord. Aisha can hear an amen. And then Jesus said, do not hold me. My time is not yet. Run and tell the others that I am risen and you have seen me. Aisha can hear an amen. Who was Mary Magdalene? Mary Magdalene was a lady from a place called Magdala, hence Magdalene. And Magdala was a town that had a reputation for prostitution. It was known. I don't know where in Kenya people go. Maybe it's the uh, East Street. Where is it? K Street. It was K Street. Just K Street. <laughs> you know, and uh, all of a sudden, even our our area around Comfe now, around that area, has become another K Street. Because, but don't go there. Hello, man. Don't go around there. <laughs> And this woman is a woman who Jesus threw out seven demons from her. This woman is associated by many scholars as a woman who was caught in adultery with a man. And I'm sure you remember the story where, but, uh, where Jesus said, whoever has not sinned, let them be the first to throw. People talk about that. And who, who has associated her to that is the, 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 the movie Passion of Christ. This woman is also associated with the woman who kissed the feet of Jesus and kept pouring, uh, kept pouring perfume. Other people will say it is Mary, the sister of Lazarus. Others will say it is Mary Magdalene. However, it was Mary. Whether Magdalene or Mary mother, whatever it is, and, and the text will talk about the two doing different times. There's one who did it earlier and the other one who did it on the week of the Passover. Again, she is also associated, this woman, to the women who accompanied Jesus. The women we talked about on, on Thursday who followed Jesus up to the crucifixion. Indeed, she was that woman who stood very close to Jesus when she, he was being crucified. And let me say to this to all of us that many people will believe that this woman probably gathered around the, that um, upper room when they gathered for the receiving of the Holy Spirit. Now, <laughs> because of her closeness to Jesus, people have interpreted it differently. One of the people who have interpreted it that way is one man who drew a very nice mural called Leonardo da Vinci. You remember you know that guy? All of us know that, that mural of uh, the, la, la, the Last Supper. You know it? And they always say that that woman who seems like they are leaning towards Jesus must be Mary Magdalene. And those of us who have, who have read the book, the, the Da Vinci Code, and have watched the movies, you see that heresy being transferred to us that indeed Leonardo Da Vinci had brought Mary Magdalene there to be given bread first. And so therefore, Leonardo, Leonardo, those who believe in Leonardo Da Vinci's mural, some of them will say, she must have been Jesus' girlfriend. <laughs> but that is a lie from hell. Hi, man. Wanna see if you were? Jesus never married. And by the way, Jesus must have been the most strongest man I've ever heard about. A man who a woman can come and akuosha migu na mafuta. Anachukua nywele yake kukupanguza. Mimi kama ni mimi. Mwili na simama. Inaanza kupa. You know, if I get attracted to women when they are far, how much more if they are? <laughs> so this was a great, great, great man. Hallelujah. So therefore, the Da Vinci Code system is simply a lie. Hello? And you can go and read that, and if you don't have that book, I can give you. I have it in my house. The Da Vinci Code. It's also, there's also a movie about it. However, what we are interested in is Mary Magdalene who followed Jesus Christ. Let's look at how she followed Jesus Christ. One, she had a turnaround. Can you say a turnaround? A woman who was with demons. And let me tell you, those of us who believe in the Reformed theology, 
We don't believe we as Reformed people or Presbyterians that someone can have go both the Holy Spirit and demons. We do not hear that. Amen? You can either have one. <laughs> There's no way you can have the Holy Spirit and you have demons who, who are being thrown out here in Nasimama and Kichwa. Are we together? So when I see those things on uh, TV, I say, these are other guys. Because you can't have the two. Of course, there are a few guys here with demons. Hello? But those with the demons don't have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen? Because one comes in, the other one goes out. So this woman had a turnaround. She made a decision. Although she was a sinner, although she was a prostitute, although she had demons, the moment she turned, her life was changed. Hallelujah. She had a, it's called a 300 and, no, it should be 90, no, not 90 degrees. 180 degrees, yes. About turn. Alikuwa naangalia huku, akaangalia wapi? Akafuata yesu. You can see that now. For you to follow Jesus, there must be 180 degrees turn around. Preach to your neighbor, tell them that. Amen? A turn around. Number two, this woman followed Jesus to support. She was among the women we talked about on Thursday that cared for Jesus' needs. She was among the women who were never there to receive but to give. No wonder she is breaking the alabaster jar. Very expensive. Baka Judah and Sema, yeah, 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 yeah. My uncle is you know, you know, Judas, eh? I wish that that oil was sold because alabaster oil was so special, yet she broke it. She was there to follow Jesus and take care of him. He, she was not there for her. Remember at one time, people met Jesus and told Jesus, Jesus, I know you are following me because of the bread I gave you the other day. She never followed Jesus for bread. She provided the, the bread itself. Hallelujah. So we see someone who followed Jesus for who he is. You know we have generations of people who are following Jesus for what he offers. If the miracle is not done, phew, they go. If I have no husband this year, phew, if I don't get this miracle, I don't need this Jesus. Jesus is not there for, for your own personal edification. Jesus is there for your own personal change of life. Ay, 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 ay. Amen? Number three, she followed Jesus to be ashamed together with him. And we see Jesus here, when he was going to the cross, this woman was right there, even to the grave. And let me tell you people, it is easier to follow someone when they are alive than when they are actually in the grave. <laughs> if today we keep, you going, see, we keep seeing you going back to the grave, we'll ask you, Kwani hujapona? But this woman stuck and stayed and waited. Even though the grave was empty, she waited. And we see someone who is falling to the very, very end. And number four, we see a woman who followed Jesus Christ even after resurrection. Hallelujah. The first to recognize our Lord Jesus Christ. What am I saying to us today as we celebrate this resurrection day? One, that following Jesus calls for self-denial. Amen. For me to follow Jesus, I have to reject myself, not reject, diffuse myself. Simply uh, crucify myself and say, I do not matter where he matters. It's not about me, but about him. That self-sacrifice is not easy. And by the way, Jesus Christ said very clearly, and listen to me, members of this congregation, that whoever wants to follow me must deny themselves. Take up the cross and follow me. So anyone here, you are doing wrong. Tukanwa. Hello? Anyone here in their family who is hated because of being a Christian, by the way, tell them congratulations. Ay, 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 ay. Anyone here who is removed from inheritance or even thrown out because of their Christians, indeed, that is what is promised in the Bible. That anyone who follows me must deny. So if there is no self-denial, then we may be following the miracles but not the miracle worker. Are we together? Number two, following Jesus requires us agreeing with him. Bible says in, in, in Amos 3.3, 3, can two people walk together unless they, they agree? 
And I said earlier that sometimes it's important for you to know that when you meet with Jesus, there must be a turn. You know, sometimes I hear people giving testimonies. Nikutawa na mungu, Yesu Christo, mwaka wa 1940. Lakini ukiangali ya mtu wa nikutawa na Yesu mwaka wa 1940, ni kama walikutana wa kapitana. Halo? Wakafanya nini? Tulikutawa na ye, nikiwa, tukafanya nini? Because their life does not show kwamba walikutana, akageuka. Once you meet with Christ, there must be an about turn. Hallelujah. You must agree with him, Jesus. I am walking with you. There are things I will never do again. Because I'm agreeing with you. And if you have to go together with you, then therefore, I would follow the words of, of, of Moses, who, 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 who God was telling, I cannot walk with you people because you are stiff-necked people. I will destroy you in the way. So in order for us not to, get, not to get destroyed then, we have to agree with what the master wants. And it is easier said than done. However, it is possible. Amen. Number three, it is about his will in our lives. Following Jesus Christ is about setting your will to him. And I want us to sing later, take my life and let it be consecrated God to thee. That the moment you tell Jesus I'm following you then, it's not about what I will, but about his no wonder all of us here today confessed as we did the Lord's Prayer. May thy will be done on earth. Exactly. What is my will? What is God's will? Many a times, your will have to bow for God to take charge. And let me tell you this. The will of God can never take you where his grace cannot keep you. Ay, 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 ay. Amen. If the will of God took you to that marriage, don't you worry. Grace will keep you in that marriage. Hallelujah. If the will of God took you to that university, the grace of God will keep you there. So his will is everything. So we need to seek his will and ask God, what are you saying concerning this matter? And let me say this as I end. It is never in vain to follow Jesus. Tell your neighbor that. <laughs> Listen to Peter. Peter is talking to Jesus in the book of Matthew 19, 27 to 29. And Peter is telling Jesus, <laughs> listen to this. We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? <laughs> this is Amkikuyu. Hello? <laughs> you know the way? <laughs> Let me repeat it again. Matthew 19, 27 to 29. Peter answered him. We have left everything to follow you. What then will be there for us? What shall we get? Jesus tells Peter. Truly I tell you, at the renewal of things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will sit on the, on the twelve thrones judging the 12 is, uh, tribes of Israel. Listen to this again. Father, and everyone who has left houses, brothers, sisters, father, or mother, or wife, or children, or fields for my sake, shall receive a hundred times and shall inherit eternal life. So while I will forget you, Mungu wa Mesota, hello, listen to this. Following Jesus is never in vain. I'm one of the wealthy guys around. Hallelujah. I'm not a poor man because I followed Jesus Christ. I'm not a miserable man. Do I look miserable? Actually, I look handsome. Even if today I went back to the market, I'll still get married. I'm a handsome man. So following Jesus Christ does not mean that you are useless. Because some of us are like Jesus is an old fashioned. And even when we talk about the old rugged cross, it is the cross with the, with the glory. Ay, yeah, yeah. So many of us here have to follow Jesus because he is promising us that there is, apart from eternal life, there is a hundredfold. You know when I sit in this church and someone is believed and I see a hundred of us coming to escort someone whose mother has died and you are not their people, God gives you a hundredfold. 
So even if you have no chama, you know, God has given you people to help you, support you in every way because that is the hundredfold. Amen. Hallelujah. God has provided all that you need. So let us follow him. And let us not give up. Hata kama kuna shida, tushikiria hapo. Mary Magdalene stood on and on and on to the very end. And I'm sure today, she is waiting for us the other day to win the glory. To win the battle and find her the other way. Amen. Amen. Faith that follows Jesus. You want to see a people who can follow even when it's painful. Amen. Amen. Some versions will say here, the text that I read, with persecution. Are we together? But it doesn't matter. Or oh, what matters, it is never in vain to follow Jesus. Someone finished. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear God, our loving Father, we thank you so much for the journey of a whole week and for your goodness upon our lives. God, we desire to follow you. And Father, we want to release the packages. We want to release the things that have sidetracked us. We want to let go the weight that weighs us down not to follow you. And Father, we pray that you forgive us and cleanse us and wash us by your precious blood. That we would follow you to the very end. And Father God Almighty, we pray this promise in your word of a, thousand, of a hundredfold may it be realized in our lives. This promise of eternal life may it be promised, may it be realized in our lives even as we come to live with you. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.